So this is Wednesday, March 5th, 2014, 9.57 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Standard Time. So I'm going to revisit death threats. Um, like all abusive people, the more they're allowed to get away with what they do, the more they attack, the more bold they become. So on January 29th, it says 30th here because it's Eastern Time, but it, I'm in the Pacific, so that would be about 9.20 a.m. I mean p.m. I'm sorry, p.m. a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Someone creates a username called Elda the Cunt. Stinks. Okay. So it's January 30th, 2012, 12.20 a.m. Eastern Time, but I'm in the Pacific Time, so that would be about 9.20 9 p.m. So it says, Elda, you cunt, I'm going to slit you from top to fat bottom. Watch me kill that fat bottom cunt dead. Okay? So these are the things that would populate. So then what happened was that night, at approximately 8.30, 8.45 or so, <clears throat> in the town that I live in, this K-I-O-N, the bomb squad had to detonate an explosive device in Seaside. So the date here was the 29th at 11.33 p.m. and then it was update January 30th. Okay, so I'm going to read the article to you. <clears throat> It says, Seaside, California, two explosions punctuated the night in an otherwise quiet residential neighborhood Sunday after the Monterey County Sheriff's Office bomb squad shut down a road and detonated a suspicious device. The victim, in this case, who asked not to be identified, said someone tossed a Molotov cocktail at her car parked in front of her home on the 1400 block of Wanda Avenue at about 8.30 p.m. Sunday night. She said the Molotov cocktail, which exploded and set her car on fire, was attached to a pipe bomb, which came to rest next to her car, but did not detonate. Seaside police responded and taped off the scene while the sheriff's bomb squad deployed its robots to investigate and ultimately destroy a small cylinder device, according to authorities. Officers said they found a broken bottle from the front of the vehicle. Nobody was injured, but early Monday morning, the victim's white Honda was scorched and parts of the undercarriage had melted onto the pavement. The robot I'm sorry, uh, the pavement. So the white Honda was scorched and parts of the undercarriage had melted onto the pavement. The robot's tracks were still fresh in the mud next to her house. I was looking down on it when it exploded, the victim said of the first explosion, the Molotov cocktail. I don't know if I would be here. It's huge. I don't think it's hit me yet. The victim who said she has lived in the home for about a year, said she is confident she was not the intended target. I think this is a case of mistaken identity or the wrong house, she said. Seaside police are investigating this incident and encourage anybody with information to call the police department, which I did, but they never got back to me. So, what I'm saying is, from head, they're going to slip me from top, the bottom okay this was a Molotov cocktail or a double hit or a double tap what's a double tap you have the first device or an incendiary device like the Molotov cocktail hoping that the person will go out and then if that doesn't get their attention in this case so double taps are usually the first tap hits people the rescue people they go in with the secondary explosion or missile or whatever that's drones double taps like this can also be where the first device goes off the intended person runs out or is by the car and then they detonate the second which was the pipe bomb underneath the vehicle So the white Honda was instantaneous for me because the next day they had pictures of the vehicle and it looked exactly like my white Honda Civic. 
So, it's like these little subtle things like, you know, we can get to you. Let me explain to you, in Salinas, California, there's, there's a large gang. But the gangs don't use explosives throughout the history that I've known they've been out there. And they don't do double taps. What is also out on the Monterey Peninsula is the Defense Language Institute, the Naval Postgraduate School, the NOAA, and weather tracking and some satellites that are bigger than houses behind the fairgrounds in Monterey. So that was in January of 2000. So there's something else I want to talk about this whole in incident that happened here that I'm not the only victim, okay? This is the news station that wrote the article KION Fox 35. This was in um, while I was living on the peninsula. You have to understand that these videos represent three different cities across California and how this network works. So to explain that I'm not the only victim, I did go to law enforcement in Carmel, California, in Monterey, California, in Seaside, California, who did try to help, and Marina, California. Th that all encompasses the Monterey Peninsula. Okay? Only one officer said, we're getting calls all the time, and I want to know what's going on. When he tried to get information, he was told to basically mind his own business. What he did was, he says, I believe every single word you're saying, and you need to document everything. Underneath that area right there is the name of the officer who took the report and the, the police report number told me to document everything that these people are doing because something's going on and they're not getting any information. Okay? So I carry this wherever I go and if you look at it in the state of California it's called the Victim's Bill of Rights. And so I carry it wherever I go it has information below this area here, but I don't want to give the name of the officer because they might hunt that person too, uh, with a police report or a, a report number about this type of harassment, theft, vandalism, etc. Okay, so, uh, but I'm not the only victim. And it happened that that same news station covered something in... Um, February, uh, in, what does it say, February of 2011, and it's called bullying on steroids, well, they call it bullying on steroids. So let me play this for you. Same thing, Fox 35, same thing as this one where, when I was living on the peninsula, okay? This story on our website, kcba.com. New tonight, police call it bullying on steroids. We're talking about gang stalking, but it actually has nothing to do with the gangs that you first think of. South Coast News reporter Candace Wynn learned more about the trend and how it's getting more dangerous because of the internet. It, it, it makes me feel afraid. Lawrence Gazzino claims his neighbors are gang stalking him because he plays loud music late at night and is outspoken. He said... Oh, there goes the internet. You know how they like to take the internet down. Hold on. Should we have to do that again? This story on our website, KCBA.com. New tonight, police call it bullying on steroids. We're talking about gang stalking, but it actually has nothing to do with the gangs that you first think of. South Coast News reporter Candace Wynn learned more about the trend and how it's getting more dangerous because of the internet. It, it, it makes me feel afraid. Lawrence Gazzino claims his neighbors are gang stalking him because he plays loud music late at night and is outspoken. He said for the last year and a half he's been systematically followed by a group of people. At one point he said they climbed on his roof to harass him. Gazzino said he's developed a paranoia that's devastated his relationships with friends and worst of all, family. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's the worst part part of me. If it was me, I would take action. Santa Cruz Police Lieutenant Larry Richard said police are becoming more aware of gang stalking because of cyber bullying. But what is gang stalking? Basically the victims could be driving their car or talking on their phones or walking the streets when a group of people try to systematically terrorize them.
Richard said gang stalking is nothing new, but new technology is making it more common. Gang stalking itself, they have elevated themselves to technology. So this is something that's been going on before the age of Facebook, Twitter, those other social websites. Uh, they just now have gone into those areas. Gazzino said he's proof that the problem isn't just online and that it can hit too close to home, a home he plans on leaving because of gang stalking. I want to be able to go to the tennis courts and, and, and uh, play tennis or play, play uh, ping pong without people following us everywhere. It, it's just nerve-wracking. I'm Candace Wen in Salinas, your Central Coast News. If found guilty of gang stalking, a person may face criminal, conspiracy, and stalking charges, all of which are felony charges in California. Tell Central Coast, here's the URL if you want to go to it yourself. What this shows is that it's a pervasive network of individuals. It's not necessarily law enforcement, private security, or military. What they do is they start recruiting and radicalizing civilians within the informant population. They can be activated by these people from higher agencies to go out there and terrorize people on the streets and stalk you. So this is to show you that I'm not the only victim. We have thousands of victims that are spread across the United States who have all come forward to proper authorities at the local, state, and or federal levels and been absolutely obstructed from justice and our rights. It's a conspiracy against the rights of the law-abiding individuals who have been put on a list and are targeted, terrorized, and stalked. What does my website say? Uh, targeted, terrorized, and stalked. And you have to understand it's not gangs in the stereotype of gangs and organized crime. These are your neighbors who are being radicalized into extremism that are conducting these operations on behalf of these other agencies. To December 5th, 2012, a death threat against me while on TalkShoe. This, in this case, I was actually on the TalkShoe user support where employees and or contractors for the TalkShoe Corporation. I was there to, to find out about something as a show host because I was having problems utilizing the internet phone. December 5th, 2012. I was on a TalkShoe, um, let's say December 5th and 12th. I was on a talk show. They have life support for uh, user support that goes on once in a while that's hosted by a talk show member or a talk show uh, affiliated uh, person. And um, it was show 159, live talk show. And I went into the call because I'm hosting a show on talk show. And what happened was I needed to get some information about why my shoe phone which is an application that you, you can use by dialing directly through your computer into a show. So I went in and I asked them a basic question. I'm having problems using uh, the shoe phone and X Lite from my Mac. Uh, I, can, I can host a show but need to use landline or cell phone. So there was a talk, talk to support, uh, TS user support, and then F underscore talk to you who was happened to also he was trying to explain everything this is what showed up <clears throat> it was a guest that was in there and began flooding the chat with something that says kill Alda kill that bitch she needs to die and then it had my real name and my email address so it kept coming up kill Alda Kill Alda, kill that bitch, she needs to die. And then it came up with my real name and my uh, email address. And this is what I get all the time. So, as you see, that came up with the host of the show. Well, I'm in talk to you. So that's um, December 5th. Because it happened on a talk show user support. So now on December 7th, December 7th, I pulled my own chat grabber because someone entered my show while I was hosting it and began to do the same thing. So you have to look at it as like a zip file. And what happens is 
they come in as an anonymous guest and then once they populate the zip file it just keeps repeating itself in the chat so all talks you did was figure out how not to allow people to do that but they never addressed the issue where someone could actually say something like that to you repeatedly give your real name and your email address and continue so that's page now let's go to the next page so it continues you see it just keeps going so here's the, it starts on page this where I isolated it okay down to the bottom let me click another page let me pull it up and they just keep saying the same thing over and over and then giving my real name so you know when you're hosting a show and you see something like that that's kinda disturbing so then you go down to the bottom and then they started doing something else where they started populating it says uh, they started giving my other gave a secondary email address and with my real name so that's what I have to deal with okay so when you get to this one that just happened recently okay so we're at Thursday February 27 2014 13 48 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, I just received this it's uh, state security at web 3 So, so um, let me play that again. So once again, it would, it's um, it came in through this. So then you heard me kind of laughing, and actually I did laugh because it's ridiculous. After I have gone to the FBI, requested law enforcement, uh, turned over the actual documentation of these like kill her, kill that bitch, you know, these type of things like that where they're highly, highly, um, you know, something like that where it gives your name and everything, y you begin to realize that there's several people who are involved with all of it to obstruct justice. So what I'm saying is that once you become aware of some of the tactics, it makes it a little bit easier to survive such blatant threats against your human living life. It's not just about cyber attacks, it's about boots on the ground intimidation and utilizing their cyber capabilities to hide or to be able to unpopulate a zip file and repeatedly in your own show while you're hosting it threat basically try to intimidate you by saying that they're gonna kill you that's not a game the people who are involved with this stuff may give a false flag operation to those civilians that they're recruiting but the reality of who these people are are highly dangerous they pose a direct threat to national security the only problem is they're a part of the national security apparatus